The founder of Rhema Bible Church and prominent evangelical leader in South Africa, Pastor Ray McCauley, passed away at the age of 75. The church says McCauley died at home surrounded by loved ones. President Ramaphosa sent condolences to McCauley's wife Zelda, his children, his extended family, and of course the Rhema Bible Church community. To talk more on this matter, we are joined by the Rhema, uh, Rhema General Manager, Executive Board Member, and spokesperson for the church, Pastor. Wayne Chaff. Uh, Pastor Chaff, great to have you. Thank you very, very much for your time this morning. Thank you. It's good to be here. Obviously, this is uh, yesterday's news that came was, is, was a very, very sad announcement that came to so many followers of Pastor Ray McCauley and, of course, members of the Rhema Bible Church. Had he been ill for a while? And I, I can imagine the reaction has been very profound since the announcement. Yeah, it has been a, um, it's, it's one of those times where like everybody was in disbelief, like we never expected it to happen uh, this soon. We knew that day was gonna come one day, but not this soon. Because Pastor Ray, because of his character, he, he always pushed through pain. He always pushed through to show up and be places where he was expected to be. So when we heard of his um, transition, his passing, uh, obviously, uh, the staff, for the family, as well as the congregation, uh, are all in shock. Mm. It's only now that people are coming to terms with what just happened. Yeah, but we are in that space that uh, we are not hopeless, but it, it hurts because we've lost someone that is uh, very important to us as a uh, the faith movement, as a church. Yeah, well, most definitely. And I mean, I know that the pastor had stepped; he'd stepped away from um, actually being, you know, actively um, on. Uh, in the church and, and, and doing things. He was obviously still a very, very uh, involved in it, but he wasn't necessarily praising and uh, being with, with the, uh, the, the audience. So what role was he doing at the time? Pastor Ray intentionally um, had planned how he was going to transition in terms of uh, um, how he's going to move into a, a new season in his life. You know? So he handed over the church um, to his son, Pastor Joshua Marconi, who had started a church, you know, way before uh, this moment. And we, we almost like uh, he gave the church um, to the son and he moved into a, um, an advisor role um, as, as a founding pastor. And he would mentor us, mentor his son, mentor people around him. Then he would come to church and preach once, once a month where his health allowed him. You know, but every time we expect him to show up and preach, he showed up and he was uh, full of life, passionate as ever, and, and, and did what he was supposed to do because he always wanted to leave a legacy um, that, that uh, you know, extended beyond uh, himself. Yeah. It, it has, it's going to outlive him because he has done that, yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you say that he would, um, he would preach once a month and, and, and you're just making me think of somebody who was telling me a story yesterday that they drove past Rayma Church and the cars were parked maybe you know it, it, it covered two blocks and the parking lot don't even think of going into the parking lot my sense tells me that was probably the day he was there um giving his uh, his sermon but i mean is that how popular um pastor ray mccauley was i i i mean i i heard of how people spoke of him and how people would flock to the um to the rayma church but what was his, I suppose, real influence in communities? I think Pastor Ray, um, for the probably 25 years I've known him personally, he loves people. That's one of his uh, greatest qualities, that he loves people from all walks of life. Pastor Ray had time for everybody. If you meet Pastor Ray in a restaurant, he will greet the waiters, the waitresses, the manager, the president, the minister. Uh, he, would, he would take a moment to shake your hand, to ask where you're from, how are you doing, how can he help you? So even in church, um, when he has a moment, he, he would pause and just, you know, um, be with the people. And he has done that for decades, and that's why people loved him. But he was just part of us, he was part of one of us. Um, it was easy to reach out to Pastor Ray without any restrictions, if you meet him at the mall. He never was surrounded by bodyguards. Pastor Ray loved to drive himself when he was able to. So I think it is because of that that people just, you know, drew closer to him. But also his messages. Uh, he was a very simple man, and he delivered his sermon in its simplicity. There was nothing complicated about his sermons, and 
he was relatable. Um, if you listen to Pastor Ray preach, you could find yourself in the sermon. You could find yourself in the story. He, he never preached of something that is up there that no one could relate to. And I think that's why uh, people love Pastor Ray. Yeah, he had such a rich history. And, you know, you, the more you read about um, Pastor Ray, the more you sort of, um, you realize what a journey this man has traveled. I mean, from being a bodybuilder from the age of 13 years old to going and um, entering Mr. Universe and, and, and getting third position and then um, going and, and, and trying to help uh, drug addicts because if, if I'm not mistaken, that was really the beginning of why he decided to open um, Rema Bible Church with his wife at the time, Linda. So it, it, it was that, that he said, and apparently there were 13 people initially when he first opened it. So that grew tremendously, but perhaps take us to the beginnings of, of Rhema Bible Church. Yeah, they're, they're like a very like, you know, um, funny stories and how the church started, but indeed it started with about 30, uh, 13 people in uh, his father's mother's house. And uh, they thought probably this is one of those seasons where he's excited to do something and uh, his 13 people end up being, you know, 12, 10 of them being family members and three outsiders. But Amazingly, after two weeks, they didn't have space in the house. Um, the listing grew and grew and grew. But he had charisma as well. Um, he's a man that loved people, as I said, but also he was a funny man. You know, like he, he always loved, loved to laugh. Uh, he was relatable. They, they, this thing grew. And before you know it, we're actually looking for cinema spaces. And uh, from there to another cinema space, then from there to the Trade Center. Then that's how Rema really. Um, began to make its mark to the point when they bought that land in Randburg and uh, they built what was the biggest auditorium um, at that time because the biggest church in terms of space-wise was something that was able to host about four to 500 people. So to come and build something that is a 5,000 seater before it got extended, it was almost seen as if someone is, is mad, you know, and, but that's a kind of uh, a pioneer he was. He, he built something that was probably 20 years ahead of its time. Uh, that speaks of a visionary. And, but he's always spoken about legacy. He always wanted to leave, you know, um, not someone behind, but I think leave the space better than he found it. He almost planted a tree, fully knowing that he would not be able to live under its shade. And even in the last days, he spoke about, we gotta do something bigger. We gotta make sure that we extend our social justice, you know, um, outreaches. He was the man who was like that. He was always in all spaces, and every time he was in a space, he always wanted to make a difference. Yeah. In terms of um, his involvement, if we go back to apartheid South Africa, I mean, this was, this was certainly a, a very dark time in South Africa, but I know that you know, during the TRC, a, a, a pastor also had a lot to say and a lot of involvement in this. And I mean, he has held many different positions um, um, within you know, top echelons of, uh, of the, the religious bodies here in South Africa. But perhaps we can talk about that, you know, um, outside of the church, the roles that he, he played in the formation of South Africa and where we are today? Well, as once Pastor Ray had a conviction uh, that came because of what he believes, uh, it was almost impossible to stop him from being in those spaces. And, uh, you know, if he needs to come against certain forces, he would. And I think that's what kept him passionate, kept him going, because he, he saw that if there's poor people, and it's because of this imbalance in the country, he had to step into the space and speak to that. Um, when we had a system that favored a uh, certain type of people, group of people, because of what believed, he, he even risked uh, the chance of, of being very popular by going against the system. Uh, when, when he stood against apartheid, it, it meant that he lost close to 240, you know, family members in the church who were like, you know, givers, uh, who do not, uh, would not agree with him that uh, black people of color should should actually be part of this assembly, part of his church. And those were the givers at the time. So he risked that, but he knew that he had to do it because it's part of, but that was part of his conviction. And he believed that our, our creation is a package and nobody was created in isolation, that all people deserve to live, you know, in unity and together as, as a unit. Yeah. And it is for uh, those kind of convictions that led him to be in those political spaces and were able to speak to presidents, ministers, and everybody that was in that sphere. And he, he did that to the very end. Mm. So he never shied away mm. from speaking to those kind of 
So the final send-off, talk to us about that because one would imagine that there are a lot of people that are going to want to be present. Perhaps you can give us a little bit more on, um, on funeral plans and arrangements. Yes, we, I think we managed to um, pan out about probably 70% of what needs to happen. We, we understood that Pastor Ray was uh, at some point uh, a local pastor who was a senior pastor of Rema Bible Church in Randburg and has other um, churches that are affiliated to uh, the mother church. Uh, we call them Rema Family Churches. And uh, that is run about 80 to 90 churches that are affiliated. And everybody wants to come and pay their tribute and uh, to come and just celebrate the life of a giant. So what we have done, starting from tonight, we will have a comfort service at 7 p.m. at Rema, which is open to everybody, um, the community as well as our congregation. But everybody is is, is welcome to join. We'll also be streaming the service. Uh, then on, on, on the 17th, we'll also have another honoring service where mainly pastors and people in ministry uh, in the political space and the community at large will come and honor him. Then we'll be finally to rest on the 19th, which will be on Saturday, on Saturday uh, the following week. We Pastor, are in talks with the, the Premier as well as the President, so we'll see how things develop from there. Pastor, thank you for talking to us. Pastor Wayne Chaff, the Rema General Manager, also Executive Board Member and Spokesperson for the Church, firstly sharing his memories about the late founder of the Rema Bible Church, Pastor Rema Corley, and talking to us about the funeral details as well.